Okay, class, today we are in section 7.3, define and use zero and negative exponents. Before, you use properties of exponents to simplify expressions. Now, you will use zero and negative exponents. The key vocabulary in this lesson is reciprocal. Key concept, make sure this is in your notes, definition of a zero and negative exponents. Words, a to the zero power is one. Algebra, a to the zero is equal to one. A cannot be zero. For example, five to the zero power is equal to one. A to the negative n is the reciprocal of a to the n. So a to the negative n can be rewritten as 1 over a to the n. So 2 to the negative 1 can be rewritten as 1 over 2. a to the n is the reciprocal of a to the negative n. So a to the n can be rewritten as 1 over a to the negative n. Example 2 can be rewritten as 1 over 2 to the negative 1. All right, now before we begin example 1 and the rest of this lesson, let me give you an example to help clarify it and to make it easier for some of you guys to understand why this rule is true. If you had 2 to the third power divided by 2 to the fifth power, that would equal 2 to the negative 2. 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. Now here they're telling you you can rewrite this as 1 over 2 to the positive 2. Down here I'm going to explain to you why. 2 to the third power can be written as 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the fifth power can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now we're going to cancel out what they have in common. So that's gone, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone that's gone and that's gone. So I'm left with 1 over 2 to the second power. See that? That's what we got right there. So now you can see through deductive or inductive reasoning, you can see that 2 to the third divided by 2 to the fifth is equal to 2 to the negative 2, but that's the same as saying 1 over 2 squared. So here I can go from 2 to the negative 2 to 1 over 2 squared because I just proved here that this is really equal to this. Which means that I can write 1 over 2 to the positive 2 as 2 to the negative 2 over 1. In other words, they flip. So look over here, look at example A. We got 3 to the negative 2. Because of this rule over here, I know I can just save time. 3 to the negative 2 can be rewritten as 1 over 3 to the positive 2, which is equal to 1 over 9. Here, I got a negative 7 to the 0, and that's equal to 1. Well, why is anything to the 0 power always 1? We're going to show you that also. Okay, now the reason why anything to the zero power is always one, we're going to go based on something that's really simple and easy for you to understand. If we had five divided by five, you would tell me that the answer is one. Well, five means five to the first power. Five means five to the first power. Well, when you are dividing um, items with the same base, you subtract. What's one minus one? One minus one is equal to zero. So therefore, once again, using inductive or deductive reasoning, going backwards, that means 5 to the 0 is equal to 1. So don't forget now, 5 is the same as saying 5 to the first. 5 is the same as saying 5 to the first. 1 minus 1 is 0. So therefore, anything to the 0 power is always 1. You don't have to figure it out. It is always 1. So now looking at examples 1c, I have 1 to the 5th, or 1 over 5, to the negative 2. I know I can rewrite that as 1 over 1 over 5 to the positive 2. 
So as soon as I see that negative, I know that's going to be go, it's going to go down and it's going to be positive. So one over one fifth to the second power. So this and this are similar, same steps. Okay, so now from there, I don't get confused. So I have one over one fifth squared. So now I come down and I evaluate what that is. Okay. One squared is one. Five squared is 25. So now I have one over one over 25 and that's equal to 25. All right. Now, how do we get that? We simply rewrite what we see. I have one divided by one over 25 and that's equal to 1 times what's the reciprocal of 1 over 25 25 over 1 this goes back to like your third or fourth grade math all right so what's 1 times 25 25 what number is up under this 1 here 1 what's 1 times 1 1 what's 25 divided by 1 25 okay now look at D 0 to the negative fifth power. All right. That can be rewritten as 1 over 0 to the positive 5. And that's going to be undefined because anything divided by 0 is always undefined. Anything divided by 0 is always undefined. Okay. Properties of exponents. The properties of positive exponents you have already learned can be used with negative or zero exponents. Key concepts, get this in your notes. I'm not going to read it for you because we are short of time. Once again, read and get it in your notes. Example two, evaluate exponential expressions. Okay, we're going to explain these as fast as possible. We got six to the negative four times six to the four. Remember we add What's a negative 4 plus 4? 0. And what is anything to the 0 power? 1. B. We got 4 to the negative 2 raised to a positive 2. But when that happens, we multiply. What's a negative 2 times 2? That's a negative 4. Negative 4 can be rewritten as 1 over 4 to the positive 4. Now, what is 4 to the 4th power? That's going to be 256. So my answer is 1 over 256. Go down to C. I have 1 over 3 to the negative 4. As soon as I see that negative 4 is on the bottom, I know I can move it to the top. That's equal to 3 to the 4th. You can say 3 to the 4th over 1 if that makes you feel more comfortable. In other words, it's the reciprocal. So 3 to the 4th equals 81. Okay, here I have 5 to the negative 1 over 5 squared. 5 to the negative 1 over 5 squared. Now, what does that mean? That means I got to subtract. So I got 5 to the negative 1 minus 2. Negative 1 minus 2 would give me a negative 3. So once again, as soon as I see that 5 to the negative 3, I have to write it with a positive exponent. So therefore, I must do the reciprocal and it must flip. So I end up with 1 over 5 to the third. What is 5 to the third equal to? 125. Example 3. Use properties of exponents. Simplify the expression. Write your answer using only positive exponents. All right. So A, we have 2 times xy to the negative 5 times 3. 2 times xy to the negative 5 raised to the power of 3. All right, I'm going to go from here to right here. 2 to the third is equal to 8. x to the first raised to the third equals x to the third. 1 times 3 is 3. y to the negative 5 times 3 equals y to the negative 15. All right, now this is positive, this is positive, this is negative. So I must rewrite this with a positive exponent. That means it's got to go down. It's got to go down. So x to the third over y to the 15th. That y to the 15th went below. 
All right, here in B, you got to pay close attention because here you have to learn another trick. We got 2 times x raised to the negative 2 times y to the positive 5. All that is over negative 4 times x squared times y squared. Now look here very carefully. I see that my 2 uh, times x to the negative 2, this is negative. That means that has to go down. So notice, this goes from here to down there. And now notice that that negative 2 is now positive. Now the y to the fifth, it was already positive, so it stays there. So now I go down to the bottom, and I do everything I can down here at the bottom. Okay, first I evaluate this expression. 2 times x to the second. 2 raised to the second, that's 4. x to the 1 raised to the second, that's going to be x to the second. 1 times 2 is 2. Over here, I'm just going to write down what I have. Negative 4, x to the second, y to the second. Now I'm going to multiply these two. 4 times 4, excuse me, 4 times a negative 4 is a negative 16. x to the second times x to the second is x to the fourth. The y to the second is by itself, so I just bring that down. So now I end up with y to the fifth divided by y to the second. That's going to be y to the third. And then my 16, I bring down. So my final answer is a negative y to the third over 16 times x to the fourth. Example 4, standardized test practice. The order of magnitude of the mass of a polyphemus moth larva when it hatches is 10 to the negative 3 grams. During the first 56 days of its life, the moth larva can eat about 10 to the fifth times its own mass in food. About how many grams of food can the moth larva eat during its first 56 days? All right, and here are our choices. We got to pick between A, B, C, and D. Solution. To find the amount of food the moth larva can eat in the first 56 days of life, multiply its original mass, 10 to the negative 3, by 10 to the 5th. So 10 to the negative 10 to the 5th times 10 to the negative 3 is equal to 10 squared, which is equal to 100. The moth larva can eat about 100 grams of food in the first 56 days of life. So the correct answer choice would have been C.